Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the DB Islamic Association's Ramadan Reminders. And today we will be continuing with our tafsir or explanation of chapter 12 of Al Quran, Surah Yusuf. This is part 6 of our series, and this means that we are within the first 10 days of Ramadan, the days of mercy. As such, we will now recite the dua for those days. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Rabbik Firwar Ham wa Anta Kairahimin. O my Lord, forgive and have mercy, and you are the most merciful of those who show mercy. So as we continue with the section on the brothers' plot and their separation, right? Ayah 13 begins. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Kola inni la yazununi antadhabu bihi. Kola. So the father is speaking to the sons and he's saying, Inni, certainly, I will surely be saddened if you take away Yusuf from me. Now, if you recognize the fact that at this point in time, the father Yaqub is pretty old. And his 10 older sons are the ones who are doing all the labor around it, taking care of the sheep and whatever else that the family needs, right? And recognizing this poor, poor Yaqub, he's caught in a sort of trap. However, he has a gut instinct, a ihlam. And this kind of instinct that we feel inside our stomachs, this guidance is from Allah. And that guidance, that means of it, is a proportional to Iman. And you can imagine the amount of Iman a Prophet of Allah has. So never underestimate your Ihlan, your gut instinct, even if it is for a non-rational reason. And he goes on, وَأَقَوْفُ أَيَّكُلَهُ ذِحْبُ وَأَنْتُمْ أَنْهُ غَوْفِلُونَ and I fear that a wolf would come and eat him while you were unaware. Now, if we recognize that he's saying that he's even more sad than afraid something will happen, which shows that there's a sign of resignation to the fact that he can't really stop them because they're giving these arguments and even though he has this feeling within him, he can't really come up and, and explain exactly why or come up with a good enough reason to stop them because they are very persistent and he is versus a very reluctant dad and all he's trying to tell them I will go into grief deep deep grief and pain if you take him away <laughs> so they said and who is they? It means that the brothers are speaking here. They have all agreed, all 10 of them, to a particular storyline. So they are saying, how is it possible that a wolf can eat him when we are a group? So even though they were the sons of a prophet, it showed a lack of understanding. Because they believed that being a group meant that they could have protected him protected their younger brother. Rather, only Allah protects anyone. So, it continues, Inna idhalla kosirun. Certainly then, we, this, our group of brothers would surely be the losers because we would end up losing our little brother. This is not possible. So, Yaqub now, resigned to the fact that he couldn't stop them anymore, right? That he had no choice to allow his little son, right, Yusuf, to go with the older brothers. So what did he do? The many ulama talks about the fact that Yaqub now came and gave him the shirt of his grandfather, Ibrahim. The same shirt Ibrahim was wearing when he was thrown into the fire many decades before. And they then departed with these words. Yusuf, my dear, remember Allah always. Know that there is no other helper save Him. 
forget me not and I shall never forget you. And as the ten brothers left with their younger one Yusuf, one of their sisters came running up in hopes of stopping them as she had a dream of a wolf eating him. But she was too late. And the surah continues, So, when they took him and they put him in the bottom of the well. Let's recall that this little brother was very, very eager to go with his older brothers for the first time alone. He used to be holding their hands and hugging them and playing them. And what happened? They put him in the bottom of the well. Now something to recognize here is this is the noble Quran, which means it has noble language. So there is no detail mentioned of the evil abuse the little boy may have endured during that period where the brothers, when they carried him out of sight of the father until they reached the well. Just like it is said, uh, the boy came out from the bathroom. It means that we understand what happened in the bathroom and the details are not necessary. So it's similarly here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, maintained the nobleness of the language here by saying that he just, they put him in the well. And we can understand what that means from there. And this is unlike the news of today, which we hear all the gory details when something goes wrong. And this desensitizes man's fitra, right? man's natural instinct. And there's a um, statement, crime spreads as news of crime spreads. But just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed this test to be given to Joseph, Allah says, Wa awhayna ilayhi. But we inspired him. And the word there is wahi, means we sent this to him, this message. And what is the message? Latunabbi annahum bi amrihim hadha wa hum la yash. Angel Jibreel has brought the message to Yusuf in the deep, dark, cold, lonely well, where he's saying, surely you, Joseph, will inform them, your brothers, about this affair, while they do not realize, while they do not perceive it. So he's reassuring him that, listen, this is not the end. There will come a time where you will be able to tell them about this and they would not realize. Some scholars believe that this picture here denotes the well in which Yusuf was thrown into. If we look at the environment, we can see how harsh and barren and lonely it is. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even in this difficult test had sent Angel Jibreel to show him his support. To tell him, the young Yusuf, that this is not your ultimate end on this world, in this dunya. However, being young he may or may not have recognized that. And another point to take here as we close off is why it is that so far and throughout the entire surah that the brothers of Yusuf weren't vilified as fasics or dholi moon in the Quran as evildoers or wrong ones. It was because they were being influenced by shaitan and at lower down in the surah we will see where they seek forgiveness for their mistakes honestly within their hearts. Unlike the mushrik, the wrongdoers, the polytheists of Thamud, of Ad, and of Pompey. So nowhere in the surah is Allah referring to these brothers as wrongdoers. Yes, they were doing wrong things, 
but they recognize it later on and seek forgiveness. And Allah says to forgive and overlook. As we've now come to the end of part 6, inshallah tomorrow in part 7, we'll be looking at the ayahs 16, 17 and 18. We now end with the dua. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta sami'ul alim. Our Lord, accept this service from us, for indeed you are the hearer, the knower. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.